Good afternoon and welcome. Today is our fourth day of CTM Academy. So if you've been with us all week, welcome back. If you're here for the first time, welcome. The theme of today is marketing and agency tools. Uh, before we begin, we always like to start with covering a few logistical items. Um, every effort has been made to ensure that the information provided in today's class is accurate and up to date. Materials for this course are confidential and proprietary, so please do not distribute them. Uh, we do have a few course recommendations for you today. Um, the first is to please make sure that you are logged into your call tracking metrics account. Also, if you have two monitors, you may want to set them up to view the presentation on one screen and uh, CTM on the other screen. Uh, I actually just realized I wasn't sharing my screen. There we go. A little better when you can see. Um, yeah, if you experience any audio issues during the class, uh, you should call in on the phone line provided in the audio panel of GoToWebinar. Um, we are going to be doing a few working sessions today, so if you do not have an account with us, uh, if you head over to our plans page, you can easily start and count up in just a minute. Uh, during today's class, there will be a series of breaks, working sessions, and Q&As. Uh, we're going to be covering um, some call management tools like agents and access controls. We're going to look at call queues, post-call surveys. Uh, we're going to touch on geo routing and geo contact, as well as uh, the smart router. We're going to look at some marketing features, which will be like our account structure. We're going to look at call triggers, custom fields, some white labeling options, uh, some agency billing and integrations. My name is Jessica Michaels, and I'm going to be your presenter today. Um, I am the Google Guru and Product Coach here at Call Tracking Metrics. If you wanted to connect, I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, I always like to start with a few exercises just to make sure that everyone can uh, hear and see me. So if you can hear me, will you raise your hand on the control panel? So I see hands going up. Good, good, looks like everyone can hear me. And then if you can see my screen, raise your hand. And I see hands going up all over the place. Good stuff, all right. And then throughout the presentation, um, at any time you could enter a question into the question box. So um, let's see, tell me something about yourself. Are you a cat or a dog person? Let's see what we have today. So just enter that into the question box to let me know that you know where it is. Looks like we have dog people. We have somebody who's both. I like that. Lots of dog people. Um, I like both but prefer dogs. Um, other people saying both. You know, I never really thought about it. Why do we, why do you have to be one or the other? I get it, both. <laughs> Um, dogs, I don't see really any love for the cats. I'm a, um, a cat person myself. I, I have a cat, I just don't have a dog. I still love them. All right, it looks like uh, everyone uh, has found the question box. So again, at any time, if you have a question, just feel free to type that in. We do have some uh, staff that'll be answering it throughout the um, presentation, or um, we might address it during a break, and then we'll have a Q&A section at the end. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show before we get started um, is where you can get our handouts, because for whatever reason, uh, GoToWebinar has not been allowing me to uh, share the handouts lately, which is just a pain. So um, let me, inside of our uh, training hub, we have a previously recorded session, and there is um, a link right here that'll get you the slide deck that I uh, will be using today. So I will go ahead and put that link inside of the um, chat box. There we go. Yep, and that would just be this link right here, and that will get you the deck that I'll be working off of. 
All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Um, typically, these classes last uh, just about two hours. I think this one will be a little short of two hours today, so we'll try to uh, get you out a little early. So let's go ahead and begin. Oh, I did want to do one uh, quick poll before we start, and it's uh, what plan are you on with us? Um, the theme of today is going to be um, all the features on our marketing plan. So if you're not on our marketing plan, um, if you're on our business uh, or I think advanced or essentials plan, uh, the features we'll be covering you will not have access to, which we're happy to have you attend and learn about features uh, that we offer. But just know that the things that we're going to be covering, uh, you're not gonna be able to see in your account. So that's just why I like to do this for this class. So let's take a look at who we have. So it does look like the majority of us are on the uh, marketing plan, so welcome. And those are in the uh, business and essentials plan, welcome, we're happy to have you. But again, just know that the features we'll be covering, uh, you won't be able to access in your account. So um, there's been some confusion about that in the past, and I just wanted to make sure that we were very upfront um, about that today. Okay, uh, somebody asked, how do we tell which plan we're on? That's actually a great question and I am happy to show you that. Uh, if I switch back to here, here we have um, an account. If you go to your settings, uh, it'll tell you what plan you're on right here. So, all right. So again, uh, if you're not on the marketing plan, we're still happy to have you. Just know that you're not gonna be able to see the same features, so. With that said, let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so in this first section we're gonna have today, we're gonna be covering call management and automation tools. So with that, we're gonna be looking at agent roles, call queues, post-call surveys, geo, which is gonna be both geo contact as well as um, geo routing. And then I will look at post-call surveys oops, and the smart router. Okay. So um, to personalize the customer experience uh, with advanced routing and management tools, we have things like um, agent roles, call queues, post-call surveys, geo routing, geo contact, and smart routing. So let's go ahead and dive into those features. So the first one we're gonna be looking at today is going to be user roles inside of call tracking metrics. We actually have a fair amount of user roles. Um, we have call agents, call managers, report managers, we have administrators, we have agency administrators, we have marketing managers and billing. So these are all different roles that you can have inside of the account. So a call agent, uh, they can view calls that are specifically assigned to them in the call log. Calls are automatically assigned to an agent when they answer calls from a queue or answer calls that are routed to their username. Calls can also be automatically assigned to agents by options in a voice menu or assigned by man manually using the set agent option in the call log. Um, up next, we have the call manager. Call managers can view all calls in the call log and will also have access to the text log if texting is enabled. Call managers can edit the blocked caller list, the do not call list, and call scoring options. They can also send single or bulk text messages from a text enabled tracking number. Up next, we have report managers. Uh, report managers have all the same access as a call manager, plus the ability to view the reporting section of the account. In addition to all the um, availabilities a call manager would have, report managers can export the call log, view and schedule call reports, view and edit overview reports, and view the real-time agent dashboard. And that's gonna be on plans that can create sub-accounts. Up next, we have a marketing manager. The marketing manager role is designed to give read-only access to tracking numbers and source configuration, plus access to the call log and reporting. These users only exist in accounts that have the ability to create sub-accounts. 
um, which would be an example of the marketing plan or the contact center plan. And we'll have access to all the sub accounts within an agency. Marketing managers can only be viewed from the all accounts user list. So we have two different types of administrators. We do have an administrator that'll be for the marketing plan. Um, and so with that, um, oh, actually one for the business plan and one for the marketing plan are higher. So with the business plan, the administrator um, can uh, is the highest level of users in the account and can view and edit all aspects of the account. Administrators are the only users who can view, purchase, and edit tracking numbers or enable and disable call recordings. They can also or they also are the only users able to access integration settings and um, add users or view and edit payment information. So that's for a business plan or an essentials plan administrator. And then we also have an administrator that would be for your marketing plan or higher. And um, so those administrators are the second highest level in the account. Um, like administrators on the business plan, they can add users, purchase and configure tracking numbers, enable and disable recordings, edit integration settings, and customize features of their sub-account, such as enabling text messages or the uh, soft phone. If a sub-account is using customer billing, the administrators will be able to view and update payment information. If the sub-account is using the agency's shared billing, administrators will not have access to any paid information. Um, administrators in a sub-account cannot view or edit agency settings page or add sub-accounts to the agency. So um, that administrator is going to be specific to a sub-account. And then we have the agency administrator. The agency administrator are the highest level of users in the account and can view and edit all aspects of the account. These administrators only exist in account that have the ability to create subaccounts and have access to several features to allow them to easily view data for all subaccounts at once. Agency administrators are the only users able to edit agency settings which can be used to customize feature availability and security settings for all sub-accounts within the agency. Agency administrators are hidden in the user list for all lower access levels. So if you're in a sub-account, you're not gonna be able to see the agency administrator of that sub-account. And then the last role that we have is a billing role. And the uh, billing users can view invoices from past payments. They cannot see or edit payment um, options or other aspects of the account. If your account has sub accounts that uses agency shared billing, you can pr promote billing users to agency billing, which will allow them to see invoices for the agency payment method, uh, but not for any sub accounts using custom customer billing. Okay, so that is our several different user roles. And if you have any questions about that, we do have a help article that will actually really say probably almost exactly what I just said. So you can revisit that in our help center. So up next, we have different access controls. Uh, so we can have several access control groups, which allow you to customize the level of access your users have within the account. You can use them to limit which numbers are visible for particular users or hide information in the call log and toggle access to certain features as needed. Access controls can only be applied to call agents, call managers, and report managers. Account visibility cannot be restricted for administrators. Uh, who can view all information on the account. So I was actually gonna show you a quick demo of the access controls, because um, they're pretty cool. So let me switch my um, screens. Here we go. So uh, to get to your access controls, you would wanna come to your settings, and then we have um, access control groups. So 
So if we scroll down here, uh, this is what it could look like. Um, so right now we have nothing enabled. So when we look at this, we can see that nothing is visible. So I find this to be a pretty handy tool because we can actually check a box and then see um, what that is enabling. So in this case, all of this lives under the contact level. So if I enable that, um, and then messages, that will show that. Um, if I want to show the source, um, maybe for some reason I want to protect the source, so I don't want my agents to see that. Um, I can hide that from them. So also keep in mind that this is just hiding it from a group that you define. It's not going to delete that information from an administrator. Uh, we could say, um, session data, maybe we want to protect that. So maybe it's something to do with uh, HIPAA compliancy. So you don't want them to know uh, what page they were on, on your website or what search terms they were using. So we could disable that. Or maybe the score, we don't want to show that. Uh, or we do, we could enable it. Um, audio or audio playback and live listen, you might want to disable that. Um, and then things like metrics, routing, and call flow. Um, maybe you don't want to give them the access to email um, your clients. You could do that as well. So that is access control groups. So you could actually create multiple of these and then assign them to different um, users. You could have it be by um, tracking numbers. So maybe only uh, your paid sources, or maybe you have certain lines that. Um, you don't want to have this information available on. So you can get pretty creative on how you want this information to show. So that is access control groups. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, switch back to the deck. So once you have your access control group uh, made, then you just want to select the users that you would like to assign the access control group to. Okay. So up next, uh, we can create different users inside an account. So we just covered all the various different roles that um, users can have. So what we're going to do is a little workshop to create some users. So let's go ahead and create um, two users for the sales team, and we can make them call agents. We can do two users for the support team and make them call managers. Uh, one user for HR, and we can make them an administrator. And then for appointment schedulers, let's have a uh, marketing manager role. So um, I decided to make this Disney themed. So for my six users, I'm going to create um, using um, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Daisy, Goofy, and Pluto. So I'm going to be using these emails. So let's go ahead and switch into our call tracking metrics account and uh, create some users. All right, so here we go. So to create a new user, you would come to your settings tab and then users. And then also I just want to um, make sure everyone knows if you don't have these options, um, it could be your own access uh, role inside of your call tracking metrics account because you'd have to be an administrator to create users. So I can say uh, new user. Um, the first thing you need to do is put in the email address. So in this case, I'm going to do mm at calltrackingmetrics.com. Um, and this is going to be a user with that mm4. And then I'm going to say this is Mickey. Oops. Mickey Mouse. Oh, first name and last name, and then um, you have the option to send instructions on how to access and create a password. Um, some other cool things that you can do inside of the agent roles is you can um, upload a profile picture. So you might have noticed with me here, I have um, a photo, so that's where that's coming from. 
Um, and then down here is where we're going to assign the roles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this person a call agent role. So call agent. And if I had created an access control group, I could add them to it, but I have not. So I will go ahead and save and continue. All right. So let's see. So now I have my new user. And I'm going to go ahead and create a couple more because we're going to use these um, users when we're creating call queues. So it is actually important that we do this. So if you're following along, please go ahead and create a few users. Now I'm obviously creating bogus email addresses. So my next one, who do I have? I have Minnie Mouse, so MM, I'm going to say five. This is going to be Minnie Mouse. I'm going to send her instructions, and I'm going to make her a call, um, <clears throat> excuse me, an agent, and hit save and add another. Next, I have Donald Duck, which I think already exists. So I'm going to do MM4, DD4 at. Nope, he already exists. Okay, five, there we go. Make this our Donald. Then I will go ahead and make him a call manager. Hit save and add another. Uh, so now I'm on to Daisy Duck. Okay. Then we have Daisy. Uh, we'll go ahead, I think call manager. And I'll add Goofy. Uh, this was actually a discussion we had here. What is Goofy? Is he a dog? That was my assumption. I mean, Pluto is clearly a dog, but what is what is Goofy? I thought dog. Goofy, I'm going to say goofy dog. And we'll make him an administrator. And then we'll add our last person here who's going to be Pluto. So I'm going to do Pluto 4. And, whoops. And he is also going to be a dog. And we'll make him an administrator as well. Or we'll make him a report manager. There we go. So now if we go to our users, you can see we have all of our lovely new users. We have Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy. If we come on over, we have Goofy and Pluto, all with their different access levels. So now we have a bunch of users. Uh, for when we create our call queues later on today. So let's go ahead and switch back to our deck. Um, did anyone have any questions on users? Um, I actually see we had a few that came in. Uh, somebody says, we work with Yelp. What user role would I assign to them if I wanted them to only see call quality? Um, I guess, with that, what would you define as um, call quality? Um, yeah, maybe marketing manager, which was what you guessed, because with that, it's kind of a view only uh, role. So with that, they'd be able to see everything, but they wouldn't be able to edit anything. That, yeah, would probably be the best one. Um, And then somebody else asks, is there a table which lists all of the information, um, example, which accounts a user role is for and what abilities the role has? Hmm. I mean, if we look at our user roles, it'll tell us that here. So even if we look right here, um, we can see all the users and right here it's going to tell us their different roles, but that is only going to tell you within this sub account. It's not going to tell you if you have a whole agency, how many users they are, what users are in multiple agencies. 
So hopefully I answered that well. Um, just really showing the wrong screen. So that would be right here. Uh, so we can see that these are the different users all listed and what their access level is. And it's also gonna tell you um, when the last time they logged in is, as well as what IP address. So if you're seeing anything shady, um, you could delete those users. All right. So moving along. Next, we're gonna talk about call queues. Call queues work when you need to route to multiple agents and have those agents on different schedules or want to automatically assign um, an agent to a call. And call queues are ideal for businesses who have specific groups of agents that wanna route calls to. For example, different departments like sales and support. Another use case is for lead sellers. Um, to lead sellers, a lead is worthless without an automated way of sending it to the appropriate buyer. Uh, your routing functionality should be able to determine the best buyer um, match by tracking variables that you can customize, including things like caps, cost, location, buyer schedules, and more. Lead sellers can create queues of leads recipients based on highly customizable factors. Then in line with your call or with your resale strategy, you can prior prioritize the call's delivery to those queues. And you can also create queue based on buying price models or day and time preference. So we're actually going to cover um, this setup uh, today. So um, inside of a call queue, we offer uh, several routing options such as simultaneous routing, uh, round robin, sequential dialing, uh, sticky routing, and wait weighted routing. So let's actually go ahead and create a call queue. Here I listed four, but I think that's a little, um, little overkill. We could just create one for the sales team for Mickey and Minnie. So to do that, let's go ahead and switch our screen back into um, CTM. Okay, so here we are. So to create a call queue, we would come to our numbers tab and then we hit uh, queues. And because we have none created, it's gonna drop us right into the queue. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is name our queue. So um, it actually auto-populated sales queue, so that works out for me. Um, you could put a description on it. Um, oh, that auto-populated too, that's awesome. Right into the sales team. Uh, so if we wanted to, we could tag the call right here. Um, what I'm gonna actually do is the IVR menu that we created, and I believe it was uh, Tuesday's class. I'm gonna have that route to the queue, and that's gonna be handling the tagging. So I don't need to tag this call as a sales call, um, but if you're routing directly to a queue and not using an IVR, this would be a good place to tag this call. If you wanted, I uh, hear you could add waiting um, messages so um, if somebody's been on hold for a few minutes and no one's picked up you could put in a little your call is important to us and uh, one of our agents will pick up um, as soon as possible uh, we do have some ai capabilities built in here so you could actually say something like um, your expected wait time is and these are little tokens and this will take a look at um, a lot of various information on your account. It's gonna look at how many agents you have available, um, the average talk time of that day, and then it will create a, um, a estimate for what the uh, expected waited time is. Um, I've seen these a lot. I think things like um, different uh, healthcare um, providers, when you're calling into them, they'll tell you, you know, expected wait time is, you know, probably way too long, 17, 20 minutes. Um, and another handy little AI tool that we have here is it'll actually tell the person what position they are in the queue. So if they hear, you know, that there's, you know, 10 people ahead of them, um, they'll have, it, it helps set the expectation for how long they're gonna have to wait. So it's always nice to um, give your, 
people calling in as much information on the wait time as you can. So we do have these handy little tools here. Um, and then just like many of our other uh, message playing things, you can choose different accent, accents, um, whether it be, you know, Spanish, French, whatever you'd like. And then with those, you can choose different voices. Uh, you could always upload your own message, having it recorded, um, record your own or upload your own. And then you could say after how many seconds do you want this to play? So I think, you know, maybe every minute and a half or so would be good depending on uh, your business. So that is uh, waiting. So um, up next, we have routing in a call queue. So this is to allow um, agents to transfer to this queue. So this is really handy, I think, uh, to enable. So say somehow somebody called the wrong number. So instead of being routed to your um, support queue, they called into the sales queue or vice versa. Uh, so enabling this would allow the agents to automatically route them to the proper queue without saying, you know, hang up and call back because that's not a really good experience. So here's where we can select our schedule. So um, for this one, I'm creating sales team and our sales team works during business hours. So then we can say, well, what do we want to happen outside of these hours? Uh, hang up's probably not the best option. Um, we could do a route to a different voice menu. We could do a smart router. Uh, we could dial a number or route to a different queue. So if you have an after hours queue, maybe that costs more. There's a lot of different scenarios. But in this case, I'm gonna say route to a voice menu and then actually have it be a voicemail so that after hours, you know, they just get prompt to leave a message. So here's where we can decide um, how do we want this to ring to our agents? Do we want everyone to ring at the same time or do we want it to ring one and then the other? So I think simultaneously is a good choice. Um, with a lot of these features, it's going to be what makes the most sense for your business. There's not really a right or a wrong way. Um, it's just what, what will help you accomplish your business goals the best. So routing for repeat callers. So you could have it route to any agent. So that's just going to, you know, have it ring to all of your agents, nothing specific. Uh, you can have it route to the same agent first. So this creates a little bit of a relationship. So if um, I'm on the sales team and I spoke with someone before and they didn't convert and they're calling again, it will prioritize routing them to me because we have, say, you know, a little bit of a relationship going on. Um, and maybe you always want them to talk to someone different. So say a new agent um, or same agent only. So this will prioritize and then um, this will uh, override prioritizing. It will just ring to them only. So that's what we call sticky routing. So then how, how long do you want it to ring to each agent? Do you want it to keep ringing until um, agents answer? Um, there's going to be a lot of different options here. Most of them are pretty straightforward. So um, next up we have is connecting. So the caller ID is shown to the agent, which uh, we could have user caller ID. You could have it actually show the um, tracking numbers. I think using the user's number makes sense. So force the caller ID. Um, this is to prompt the agent to accept the call. This is really, I think, a preference thing. Um, sometimes when it's ringing simultaneously, you could have it, um, if all the agents pick up the phone at the same time, uh, that way instead of them hearing nothing, that they press one and then the person who presses one will get connected first. Um, really just a preference. I'm, I'm actually not a big fan of that, but I know a lot of people are. So it's really, however you want to handle it. All right, so we can have some other just customizable options here. Beep for the caller, beep for the agent. Um, hang up when the agent presses star. Um, hang up other agents immediately. Just a ton of different options for you. Uh, so then we have some no answer routing, which will bypass the queue if no answers or no agents are available. So if you think about it, um, maybe 
I have a sales queue and I have a support queue. So if all of my sales agents are on the phone, rather than ringing um, to them and then them hitting the waiting, I could have it override it and maybe ring to a different department, which I would then tell it to do, which we haven't built yet. So in this case, we can leave it off. Now, this is one of the things that I think is really cool. Uh, we have a post call survey. So, and this can go two ways. So, one is for the call agent to help measure um, whether or not this call was converted or not. We have the ability to score calls inside of the call log, but what this will do is it will automatically prompt them. So, after the caller hangs up, what it can do is it would automatically play a message for the agent to say, if this call converted, press one, and then it will prompt them to use their keypad to enter a conversion amount. So this is really cool to help measure sales, um, and especially if your agents aren't actually using the call log. So we have plenty of clients of ours that are utilizing you know, all of our um, call tracking and call routing, but their agents themselves have no real visibility into it that um, it's all kind of behind the scenes from them. So as soon as the caller hangs up, um, it's going to prompt them to press one and then enter the conversion amount. So there's a few different, um, after the caller hangs up, we can say hang up the agent, we could direct them to a voice menu, um, we could direct the agent to a, uh, a queue, another number, or prompt the agent to determine if a sale was made. So with that, it'll be press one, and then um, after the agent hangs up, we also have the ability to do like a quality um, a quality check uh, for the caller. So after the caller hangs up, we could direct them to a voice menu and we could create a voice menu that says, you know, uh, if you were satisfied with this call today, press one. If you were not satisfied, press two, um, which we can actually go and create one of these right after this um, call queue. So those are pretty cool. We'll come back to that. Uh, so the next thing we can do with our queue, which we've just created, um, which really most of the functionality is pretty straightforward, is we need to assign uh, people to this queue. You could assign specific tracking numbers. So maybe you have numbers that call this number for your sales queue, um, or we can assign it to agents. So in this case, oh, I have to save all my options. Yes, always save. I made that mistake in one of the earlier classes and then I lost all my work. So assign my agents. So I want to assign Mickey and Minnie and let's say Donald and Daisy. This is my sales team. There we go. So now these four agents are assigned to this queue. So let me show you how to go ahead and create that post call survey. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to edit the IVR menu we created on Tuesday so that if they press one to connect to sales, now we're going to have it um, route to the sales queue. Uh, and somebody just asked a question uh, to please confirm that you can set up the post call survey so that there are two surveys, one for the agent and also one for the caller, correct. We can absolutely do that. And we're going to actually do that right now. So first we're going to edit the IVR that we created earlier uh, this week, which is going to be our main routing. So now that we have a call queue to route to for our sales, we, um, let's see what we told it. So we said, thank you for calling. Please, please press one for sales. So uh, we left it to call the agent. Now we want it to call the queue. So what I will do is I'll switch this to then say um, call queue, and then I would select my queue of sales. So now if anyone presses one, it will route to my sales queue. So I can go ahead and save that. Pretty straightforward. And then had we gone through and created a different queue for two, which was support, um, and three was for HR, then we could tell it to route to the queues. So now let's go ahead and create our customer satisfaction survey for the caller. So we would say new voice menu. I'm gonna call this, I'm just gonna QC quality check. 
um, the schedule, I will just say business hours. Um, so mine, I will, this is where we're going to direct the caller on what they should do. So say if you were were not So this would just be um, telling the user what to do. And then I could call this something like uh, customer survey so that it'll tag the call to let us know that the customer was surveyed. Um, this is just input control. So this is going to allow us to say, you know, how many times if they get it wrong, do we want to let them retry? I could put a custom message like, oh, sorry, we didn't get that. Um, and let them try again and then after five times you know to eventually just hang up so if they press one um, this is going to say that they're happy so maybe all we want to do is say something like hang up and just play a message that says when you're happy we're happy play some sort of cheesy message like that just to let them know um, you know we're happy that you're satisfied um, and then we could add an action of tagging this call and then have it be happy customer and then save because we want to save our work. And then the second one we need to deal with now is what happens when they are not happy. So this would be um, our unsatisfied customers. So if they dial two at this point, we probably want them to leave a message and then say something like, we're sorry to hear you're not happy. Please leave us a message explaining something like that. Just uh, really straightforward. Sorry to hear you're not happy. Please leave us a message explaining what happened or maybe how we could have done better. But you get the idea. So we could have it play a beep. Uh, we want to record it and we can transcribe it. Um, if you wanted, you could put a maximum recording length. So we could do that in minutes or seconds. So um, we do charge for transcribing by minute of talk time. So if somebody's like really unhappy and they're going to leave you an hour long rant, you might want to limit that and maybe just say 10 minutes. Uh, hopefully that's not the case. But um, then we could tag this call and then we could say um, unhappy customer. So this way, what's really cool about the tags is then in the call log, we can filter and in our reporting. So we could actually run a filter for all of our happy customers, and then we could run a filter for all of our unhappy customers. So it's a great way for call managers or even contact center managers to be able to very easily report on the satisfaction of your clients. So in this case, we don't need to add any numbers to go here because we're going to be prompting someone to this. So we'll just hit save and then we'll head back to our call queue and then we can go and edit it. And we'll go to our post call. And then now in this case, after the agent hangs up, we want to direct the caller to our voice menu and we're going to have it be our quality control voice menu. So pretty cool. So now um, after the agent hangs up, they're going to be prompt to press one if um, the call converted and then they'll use their keypad to dial in the conversion amount. While at the same time, the caller will be sent to a, um, a menu that's going to ask them to press one if they were happy and two if they were unhappy. And then we'll be able to um, create tags and reporting for that. So that is call queues and post call surveys. So if we come back to our call queue, uh, right here it's going to tell us a lot of information about the queue uh, without having to go in and view the settings. So we can see, you know, the name of the queue. We know that it's routing to the sales team, uh, to the repeat caller. It's going to route to any agent. That's going to ring them all simultaneously. Um, that it's going to use the caller ID. 
a, it's going to let us know that we have post-call um, surveys enabled, um, let us know the schedule's business hours and all the agents um, within the queue. Now here's where we can do some enhanced editing on the agents. So um, this is something uh, actually new is the edit all, which is pretty cool. So if you wanted to do some mass editing and be able to see all of them at the same time, we can do that. Or we could come in and edit each one individually. So we could say, you know, how are they um, scheduled routing, business hours. So if we wanted our agents to have a unique routing or a unique schedule, uh, we could do that. We'd obviously need to create the schedule and then assign them to it. So that that way you could have a sales queue with different, um, with multiple agents on it and they all will be on their own unique schedule. So if you have like an early shift and mid shift and a late shift, um, that they all can be in the same queue, but it, their routing will be based on their um, schedules. So you could do location-based routing. So if you wanted, if you have a sales team that handles, you know, say the, um, what do we call it, the Delmarva area, which is Delaware, uh, Maryland, and Virginia. Um, I could assign that here. Uh, you can do limit-based routing. This is used a lot um, with, um, if you're doing lead selling. So you could say, you know, only let them have X amount of calls per day or month. So maybe you're a lead seller and you have a client who buys, um, you know, 20 leads from you a month. You can put a max on so that after their 20 calls, we're not going to try to route to them anymore. This can also be really handy for training purposes so that if you have um, new employees coming in, uh, you can max how many calls that they can take um, a day or a month. So we'll actually just leave that blank. Um, and then you can actually set some criteria for when you want it to count as a call. So um, for a lead seller, you know, maybe the call has to be X amount long. So maybe the call has to be over five minutes for it to be counted as a quality um, lead that you can sell to this person, or it could be based on a, um, a score tag. So then we have um, some weight-based routing options. So you could actually say the max calls that this person can take. Um, into agents with the highest uh, weight will receive the most calls. So this is also a nice way to prioritize your agents. So maybe your senior agents, uh, your senior sales team, you want them all at 10 so that they're going to be prioritized the highest. While your um, still fairly new uh, sales team, you could have them at, you know, five. And then your like real new team, you could have it like two so that it's going to prioritize who it should ring to. And you can do tag-based routing. Um, we have some connection options. So you could do um, single channel, dual channel recordings, uh, or just use the default settings that are going to be in the call settings for the tracking numbers. Um, and then same how we could do the prompt agent. So um, it, in the call queue, you could have it be unique to the agent to prompt to answer or do not prompt or just use the default of the queue. All right, so let's save agents and we're done. So that's all the different ways that we could um, set up waiting, um, max or what a capping, um, and you could also do cost per call. So this is going to use our Stripe integration. So uh, this is also used for the lead sellers. So if I'm selling a lead and um, to this uh, company would be more of what this was than an agent, um, I would say, you know, to them, a lead is worth $200. These people are paying a lot more. So these leads are going to be worth $500, but I probably want to prioritize them higher. So there's lots of different ways that you can um, configure your lead selling. All right, so that is agents, cues, and post-call surveys. Lots of fun stuff that we can do there. Okay. So up next is post-call surveys. We actually already went over this. So it's a great way to track sales on your calls or routing, 
our call routing will promote your agents to take a post-call survey after the caller hangs up, and then they'll use their keypad to indicate when a sale was made. Um, and we can also do that for customer satisfaction. Um, and that's just one of the options. Uh, if you saw the drop-down, there was a few. Uh, so we could actually have for the agent to be prompt to an IVR menu, so we could create a unique IVR menu for the agent as well. Really customizable to whatever fits your business needs best. So the next feature we have to discuss is geo-routing, which is uh, geographic routing, which will automatically route calls to the location that is most relevant to the caller. This solves the issue of having to put a client and a prospect on hold and transfer between location and avoids the need to repeat information from agent to agent, which I'm sure we've all been there and it's really annoying when you get transferred and then to another agent and they ask you all the same information. Um, businesses may automatically route callers to their closest location using caller insights or by asking the caller to identify their location by keying in their zip code. Geographic routing is particularly useful for multi-unit or franchise organizations who want a single centralized toll-free or vanity number with calls seamlessly routed to the appropriate franchise location. Franchisers may now control call distribution and pull performance reports across the entire network or franchise. Geographic routing is completely customizable and simple to update. Uh, you start by adding your office location and radius for each agent or dealer. You choose to route by zip code or area code. Uh, you decide whether you want to automatically route or ask the caller to route by entering their zip code to route. Uh, you set up routing rules for overlapping dealer territories. Uh, you can view reporting to show how many calls are routed to each location. If you ever need to make changes or updates, you can upload hundreds of territories at once to make a batch um, to make batch updates. So, geo routing is pretty powerful. Very cool for franchises, multi-location places. Um, we are not going to be doing a workshop on setting that up today. It's a little bit more complicated in a demo um, atmosphere, but we did want to let you know that we do offer this feature. So on that same kind of geographic note, we have GeoContact. So what GeoContact does is it works by matching a website visitor's location to a tracking number. For example, a visitor in Italy will see an Italian phone number, whereas a visitor from the UK will see a UK phone number. In the US and Canada, businesses can also show a tracking number to their closest uh, to the closest visitor down to the area code level. So a visitor in New York will see a different number than someone in Maryland. So this is really handy um, for the clients of ours who really want to have that local feel. Um, so I know like, so call tracking metrics were in Annapolis, Maryland, and that's going to be 410. While um, maybe we want to have a really local feel for our DC friends, which would be something like 301. Um, and like I've said before, that I used to be our ma marketing manager here at call tracking metrics, and I use this on a lot of our international ads. So rather than having to create different ads for the different locations we service, because we service um, over 80 different countries now, that um, rather than creating a landing page, you know, for the UK and a landing page for Italy and one for Australia, that I could actually have um, it geo contact so it will be able to recognize where they're from and then automatically swap into that country. So it has that real local feel to it. So pretty cool stuff that we can do there. That's going to be. Um, it's going to be dynamic number insertion. So like how we swap by source, it's taking the source. So say what I was doing was Google AdWords, and then I actually had a ton of different locations. So it would be able to identify when somebody was in those different areas and then show them the location appropriate format. So some really cool things that we can do there as well. So um, up next, we have smart routing. Uh, smart 
Call routing refers to the intelligent directing of phone calls based on either predefined or dynamically generated roles. For example, a repeat caller could automatically be routed to the salesperson he or she spoke with the day before. Another example is for calls from people who have visited particular pages on a or particular pages of your business's website could be routed to certain groups of agents that uh, with expertise in that area. So an example of that is say you're a, um, a travel agency and you sell cruises and you sell resorts and you um, yeah, just say cruises and resorts based on you know the people who are the Caribbean cruise page that it would route to your cruise specialist why those who are you know the luxury resorts will route to your um, resort specialist salespeople. Um, we can also use caller insight to pull in rich demographic data such as age, household income, marital status, and gender to automatically route calls to the most appropriate for those callers. You can create custom fields to track data that's important to you, such as account ID, customer type, or region and route calls based on that information. Uh, the smart router helps increase conversions, customer satisfaction, and overall efficiency with call centers. Um, consistent with call tracking metrics and other routing options, the smart router is easily um, accessed through a simple rule-based interface. and uh, to set up the configurations and you can change them at any time. So lots of use cases for the smart router. And with that said, let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break and we'll meet at five past the hour. If you have any questions, feel free to type them into the question box and we'll address them um, after the break. So we'll meet back at um, 3.05 or five past the hour if you're in another time zone.
All right, welcome back. Okay, so I did have a few questions that came in. Um, one is, uh, it says that you said it's helpful for agents to take uh, the survey to confirm whether there was a sale or conversion, especially if the agent was not using some other function and they didn't quite catch the name. So I wanted to show that. Um, let me see what screen I'm sharing. Oops, the wrong one. So here we go. So what I was referencing is whether or not they were using the score panel here, or in a lot of cases, we're just routing directly to desk phones, and the agents might not even be aware that call tracking metrics is being used whatsoever. So that, um, you know, they might not be living and breathing the call log. They might just be, you know, when their phone, when their desk phone rings, they pick it up. So it's really on how your business is set up. So I did want to try to do an example um, so we could see the post-call survey. So um, what I did is I added myself to the uh, queue, uh, the sales queue. So what I was going to tr attempt, assuming my configuration is all proper, so I'm going to copy this number and then uh, dial it from my Google Voice phone. Um, Hopefully you can all hear this because it's going to play through the computer. So let's give it a try. Thank you for calling. Please press one for sales, two for support. One. Mute this because it's now ringing to me over here. And hit answer. So now I know. Nine. So, ah because the feedback got all messed up. Um, so that wasn't very successful. Um, it's hard to try to test these things with one people or one person. So not the most successful uh, test. So um, I had another question that came in and it was um, in reference to the Yelp. It said they wanted to more uh, or less send Yelp, letting them know whether or not their calls they were getting were relevant because uh, they get a lot that are marked as hangups. Um, so in that case, probably the best thing to do would not be to add them as a user, but to maybe set up like an, um, a notification. With their notifications, we can do things like daily digests so that, um, it could be um, a daily digest of all the calls to that source of maybe Yelp. Could go to them so they could see that at a, maybe a daily, weekly, or monthly um, cadence. So I think that might be a better solution for that. So that was a really good question. Um, I'll have to figure out another way to call in so we can hear the post-call survey and then have it tag appropriately. But let's go ahead and switch back. We have a few more things to cover today. Okay. In this next um, section, we're going to be talking about the integrations that are going to be unlocked on the marketing plan. So let's take a look at what those are. There's actually a whole handful of them that are going to be unlocked once you uh, upgrade to the marketing plan from the business plan. So um, one of the ones we have is call tracking metrics and Stripe. Um, the integration with them is just one of the many tools we have. Um, that are designed to help agencies and resellers um, uh, to do call tracking for their clients and networks. So once um, CTM and Stripe are linked, you can use uh, usage and billing information will be sent into Stripe so that your customers' credit cards can be billed at the rates and frequencies of you set based on your pricing model. So um, that's a great way for agencies to resell at a marked up rate, because of course you want to make money um, and build their clients. So we have lots of other integrations um, that are unlocked as well. One of them being Marketo, we have HubSpot, Kenshu, Marin, uh, or Oracle Maximizer, Cake, Quizio, Visible and Unbounce. So a lot of those are just uh, marketing automation tools, marketing reporting tools. Um, Unbounce is the landing page building tool. So we can uh, directly integrate with those. And with things like Unbounce, I will actually be telling you, you know, what variation of the landing page they were on when they placed the call or filled out a form. So there's a lot of some 
uh, pretty cool stuff that we can do with that. Um, so I wanted to actually switch in to a demo account and show you one of the cool new features we have with Stripe. So let me um, switch into that account real quickly and then show you how that works and hopefully it'll be successful. Okay, so this is our um, demo account. This is our chocolate store. So one of the new features we have, um, once you have your account integrated with Stripe, is we have the ability to take credit cards over the phone, which is pretty cool. So here we could say, um, I'm on the phone with this person and I wanna put in a charge. So as soon as I hit this, it's going to have the recording stop because we don't want to log credit card information inside of our system. So it'll actually stop the recording. Um, I could enter additional information about the um, caller that is going to be billed. Um, and then I could say, how much am I going to charge this person? So I'm going to charge them, you know, 100 bucks. Um, they actually have a way I can test this where it's like a fake thing anything 4242 and then hit submit payment and then it should process so now it just marked this as converted and put a hundred dollars in and then I actually have it hidden here's our payment information so it automatically creates a transaction ID and a customer ID and then that information will be sent into stripe so pretty cool. Um, we'll actually be covering a little bit more and some cool capabilities we can do once we have this um, in just a minute. So uh, yep, pretty cool stuff we can do with um, uh, Stripe uh, that we can do with all the other integrations that are unlocked on the marketing plan. So let's go ahead and switch back into our slide deck. Uh, so somebody asked a question, is there a way to set up a Stripe integration to give a client one free toll-free number and 100 free minutes before they get billed? Um, I'm not sure. I think that would be more like invoice billing where it would be something um, like you'd be covering the cost and then you'd be billing them based on um, how you configure it. So I'm not sure if that answered it so well. So... Um, up next, we're going to talk about some agency features uh, that we have. So that's going to be master and sub accounts. We're going to look at call triggers and custom fields. We're going to look at white labeling and agency billing. And agency billing. All right. So um, what's really great with our marketing plan um, and contact center plan is that you can have an unlimited number of sub accounts. So you'll have a master agency account, which is typically, you know, the name of your agency. And then after that, you can have a sub account for each of your clients. And we're not going to put a limit to that at all. So um, it's almost like if you're on our business plan, it would be an unlimited amount of business plans at no additional fee other than uh, the monthly fee, so not per account. And then with that, you're going to have, um, we have our agency reporting, which is going to take all the different sub accounts in your um, agency and squish them together to see your total usage. And then underneath of um, the total combined usage, it'll show you the reporting for each individual sub account. So I'm actually going to flip this around, and rather than doing triggers first, I'm going to do custom fields, and then we'll use um, the two together. So we have the ability to create um, custom fields inside of call tracking metrics. Um, so with this, we can create things like custom panels. We can add custom um, fields into the contact center of um, to the contact of your clients. So if you want to capture things like account ID, maybe company, anything that's not in our standard use case, uh, we can do that with the use of custom fields. So I'm actually going to switch into our demo account and show you a fun use case for custom fields, and then we'll actually create triggers off of those. So let me switch back into our own account. Just 
just a second. Here we go. So here we are back um, in our account that we created for this um, academy. So to get to our custom fields, we will come to our settings and then we have custom fields. Now, um, here's one that we created uh, in yesterday's class, which would be the cost, which um, actually associates uh, cost per click um, from Google. It'll actually populate that into the call so that you'll know how much each um, call actually costs you. And then if you're doing conversions, uh, it'll actually be able to create true RI reports. Say you paid, you know, maybe $5 a click for that call, but then it generated $100 in revenue. So to be able to populate that. So we could add um, custom fields to our score panel if we wanted to, um, or our contact panel. So if we wanted to add a field, uh, we'll have our display name and API name. So um, let's actually real quick take a look at what our custom fields look like or our contact fields before we start adding new ones. So by default, we have um, contact name, email, number, street address, postal. So yeah, maybe I want things like the company or maybe role or title um, so I can add those. So let's go to custom fields and here we go. So I want to add a new one. So maybe I want to know what the company name is and have that be um, text saved to the contact. So within this, we can have saved to contact or activity. So um, for something like the a custom field in the contact, I think it makes more sense to save to the contact. So if somebody calls back five times, so that information will be saved in every record. While if you save it to the activity, it'll be you know per um, call. So in the case of cost, that makes sense to save to the activity, but something like company shouldn't technically be changing every call. Um, so maybe a company, and maybe I wanna know what their um, job title is. Oops, there we go. Save that to the contact as well, because that's something that shouldn't be saving. Um, one of the things to know is when you save them, um, that the API name and all that, it can't be uh, changed after it's saved. So if you are going to need to modify it, uh, make sure that it is correct, because the um, once a custom field is created, the following fields can no longer be edited, and that would be something like the API name, the field type, um, save to call versus calls. So I'm sure I want to do that so we can see that these are now locked. Now before we do the next part, I wanted to show you um, something first. So this is our demo site that we're using these days. So with this, it's Coco Loco. It's a chocolate store. So inside of the store, we sell truffles, chocolate cake, and then we have um, a category called dipped and dunked. So if I was taking orders over the phone, um, maybe I wanted to know, you know, these fields and then have it be um, drop downs so that if anyone wanted to order a truffle that it auto populated these. So what I'm going to do is um, going to say new panel. Um, and then I'm going to say the first thing that's going to be required is a transaction ID. And I'm actually just going to say transaction. I'm sorry to create a transaction. I'll say ID number because I want that text saved to contact. I want to have that saved activity because it's going to be unique every time. Um, and then I could say add field. Maybe now I want to know um, what the category is. Oops. And then this would be text save to activity and hit, hit um, save. Now we can do um, custom fields that are dependent. Oops, I'm gonna call this ecom. So now those are saved, so I can say add fields. Um, uh, maybe purchase 
item. And then I want this to be a picker and then I'm gonna say saved activity. So here's where I might wanna say truffles, cakes, and then say something like um, we have dipped and dunked. And then I can say um, save real quick and say add field. Now this one I'm gonna say truffles and then have it be a um, a picker as well. And this is where we can do dependent fields. So this box will only show up if another box was selected. So in this case, now I can say purchase item and then say the field value of, oops, truffles. So now I can say update. So this will only show up if this item was selected. And then um, I'm just gonna make some up here, say chocolate, truffles, milk, chocolate, truffles, I'm gonna make this dark chocolate. Um, and then we'll add another one and we'll just say cakes and we'll make this a picker as well. And then um, with the saved activity. And then I'm just gonna say same thing, except I'll make a cake. Cake and cake. And then I wanna make this be dependent on if this purchase item, if the category was cakes update. And then I can say save, okay. So what is that we just did? Oh, something else that's kind of fun too is that you can change the icon of your custom panel. So uh, this is e-commerce. So maybe I want this to be something like, I think we have a credit card one in here. There we go. So maybe something like that. Um, save. And we'll see if I set this up properly. So if I come to the call log now, now I have this custom category or custom panel. So if for this call, if I'm taking an order over the phone, um, I might want a transaction ID number. Um, or if I say they're gonna purchase a truffle, now all of a sudden I have a new box that's gonna show up and it's gonna show the different truffle items that I have. While if they were to select cakes, now I have another box that'll show up and I have my different cakes that'll show up. Pretty cool, right? So with that, we can hit um, save, then it's gonna uh, enter that information here. Um, now this is where we can talk about um, the triggers. So um, let me actually enable Oh, I didn't do that. I didn't do the Stripe integration on this one. Um, I'd have to put a transaction ID number to send this an e-commerce event. So I'm just gonna make one up. Say it is this, save. Now um, we have call triggers, which are pretty cool. So with what a call trigger is, is an automated activity that we define how it will handle um, and what the actions will be. So one of the examples we have is a, um, we could say cost, um, there's lots of different trigger actions. So it could be at the start of the call, um, an outbound call based on routing, based on answer transferred. There's a whole bunch of them. I'm gonna say manually updated, uh, cause that's gonna be um, if I entered, you know, some, uh, you could say trigger for then all activities or a specific tracking number. In this case, I'm gonna say all, and oops. Also I'm gonna call ecom event. And now we can create custom workflows. So from here, I can say, um, what do I want to happen? So we can say based on all these different field types, um, if we want something to happen. So I might say if the call is converted, yes, then I wanna take an action. And that action that I wanna take is to, in this case, send an analytics um, transaction um, event, which is an e-commerce um, 
transaction into analytics. Now what's cool is um, since I filled out that custom panel, now I have that as tokens. So I could say if this call was converted, um, put the transaction number in here, I could say, um, oh, I should add a cost. Um, yeah, let me actually just go ahead and save this. Lovely. And I'm going to add another custom field. It's nice as you can always add more and I can actually adjust the location of them. Um, so I could move my category weight down. Actually, you know what? I want to get rid of category because that's not what I needed. Um, and then I want to add this field. I want to be... be purchase cost and then save to activity that's fine hit save yes I'm sure I understand there we go so I could come back if I wanted to rescore this now I have purchase cost so I could say this was $45 boom then we go back to my trigger edit it and then say that the um, transaction tax revenue have that be the purchase cost so that these are the different fields of an e-commerce transaction um, inside of analytics so um, the one thing that's going to require that you have is a transaction number if you're using our stripe integration it will auto create one um, and then the rest are optional fields that we can put in. Um, so in this case, since we have a cost, I want to have that go in as the revenue, so that report in analytics as a revenue for my e-commerce. So I can hit save. Um, and I can actually add additional tags. So maybe I want to tag this call now and say as an e-com event, so that we know that this went into analytics. So save that. So if I come now back to my call log, um, if I score this call, hopefully this will work, and mark it as converted, um, we'll say my conversion amount is 45 because that's what I marked there, and hit save. It should take just a second and then run it and then tag it. If I did it right. Actually. To edit it rather than manual input I'm going to say when a sale is made I think that makes more sense and then hit save save okay so you unscore this and then try again and say 45. Might just take just a second and then it should give me my e-com transaction or my score tag. Oh, there it is. So now I know that an e-commerce event was sent into analytics and I can uh, and that the whole uh, trigger has run. So there's a lot of really cool things that we can do with triggers. Um, let's look over a few other use cases. So if we go to triggers, let's say new one. So let's see, we can have it be um, so many different at the start of a call, at the end of a call, um, when a call is transferred. Um, there was a delay if when there's paid information associated to a call uh, when a keyword has been spotted um, I don't believe we set up any keyword spotting rules so let's use the example of when PVC information is associated so I'm gonna trigger this for all sources actually let me just show you some other ones save I have to name it let's save So 
so I could have this only be to my um, paid campaign or my paid tracking sources and then I can create a workflow. So what do I want to happen when I have paid campaign information? So again, I could say when tracking source includes any and then say these two, since it's only to those two, what do I want to happen? Um, maybe I want to send a special event into analytics that's different. Um, and then here, this is actually going to give me a lot of options to customize what information we send in uh, as the event into analytics, why our out-of-the-box integration with um, Google Analytics doesn't give us the ability to customize things like the category, the action, and the value which I can do here, as well as set a default property. So if for whatever reason I want all my paid traffic to go into a different um, analytics property, I could program that in here. Um, and then in this case, maybe I want these to go under paid calls rather than just our standard of calls. Now, typically the action um, we have go in as the source, but in this case, we can actually add lots of different things. So I could add things like, um, the ring time, hold time, total talk time, um, the type. So the type would be um, whether or not this was an inbound or an outbound call. Um, I could have it be some information on the contact. So maybe I want the um, action to be the name, their number, their email address, um, any information that we can associate with them. Maybe the cost would actually be a good thing to look at since I'll be able to associate cost to these calls. So it actually tell me how much this call, um, the cost per click was. Um, so this is going to be information we get from our enhanced caller ID. So maybe um, Maybe I want to know, you know, what their gender, education, any of those, or the custom fields that we create. So maybe, um, maybe I want it to be their purchase item. So if they were buying cakes, I want the, um, the event action to actually go in as cakes. So it gives us a lot of flexibility on customizing this information. Um, and then the value we can have in duration or maybe the conversion amount. I think that makes sense. So I could go ahead and save that. There's no limit to the amount of triggers that you can create. Um, I'm actually gonna jump into this account to show you um, some other ones that we've had. So we uh, talked about this one, I believe um, yesterday, we went in and created one for texting. So, um, in this case at the start, because the action is actually gonna be an inbound text, we could then tag the call to say that this was from a text message campaign. And then we could create a automatic response to a text message. Uh, then we could send an email to um, the manager, letting them know that they've received a text message from their campaigns, and then tell them a little bit about that text that came in. So triggers are really good for creating automated workflows. And what's also cool is we can rearrange the order that these happen. Let's look at some other ones that we have um, have configured. So this was an e-commerce event. So this was very similar to what we just did to tag it like that, map the prices over. Yeah, some other um, fields we have. So this would be um, with our Shopify integration. Um, if they fill out a, if they purchase something, it'll come in as a form submission. And then um, with that, we'd have a transaction ID. So if we say it is not set, then to set it to the one in the form, we can put a delay on it. And then we can actually tell it to execute other triggers that we've created. So that then in this case, um, when this was a manual order that they actually did themselves, um, that we would then um, update the fields in our custom field. And then we would trigger, um, we would execute another trigger that we've already pre-configured. So we could do things like add emails. We can really build out these automated workflows. We could have it send you a text message. There's just so many uh, possibilities for the triggers. 
let's see. So that was just a few examples. Um, so that was triggers and custom fields. Both are a lot of fun. You can really get creative with your use cases of them. Um, and there's just so many different ways to use them. So let's go ahead and switch back to our deck. So we have um, white labeling. So that's another exciting thing that will be unlocked once you come into um, our marketing plan. So white labeling allows agencies or resellers to place their own brand or call tracking metrics product to give their clients access to the system or domain of their choosing. So any agency's clients would log into call tracking metrics system through the agency's own domain and even have a page um, for login that um, to their interior pages that is branded with the agency's logo. This is a great way to market the service as part of your agency's offering and an added value for your clients. So um, I actually wanted to switch in and show you a few of our uh, white labeling options. So let's go ahead and switch back to the call log. Actually, you know what, I'll just use this account. So if we go to settings and we'll go to our account, we can edit this. Um, so appearances, you can see right here already that this has um, the Coco Loco logo and not the call tracking metrics one. So some real simple um, white labeling right there. So we can have that um, there and we could upload a different one for dark mode just in case everyone hasn't seen that. Um, that comes with all accounts. You have the ability to switch um, from light mode to dark mode. Um, and then this will be the little icon up here. So rather than showing call tracking metrics icon, um, kind of like this, you can upload your own businesses. So again, it looks very branded um, as your brand. Uh, we can also give you the ability to change the um, default colors. So a lot of people like to play with these. So um, maybe your brand colors are more purple. So we could update our theme to be purpley. And maybe, you know, purple and dark mode is definitely more of your brand. So we give you a few real easy ways to customize to match um, your company, maybe gold. Where? Yeah. I like the bright colors, maybe green. Yep, so different ways that you can um, customize oops, the appearance and feel of the product to match more of um, you know, your own brand. So I'll just go ahead and put that back to default. I'm a traditional girl, I like the regular. I'll go back to here. So, yep, uh, just a few easy, quick uh, white labeling options that we have. Uh, we do have a paid version that is an additional $49 a month, um, which is an add-on to the marketing plan where agencies would white label their own domain. So features of the white labeling program, uh, you can white label your own logo. You can customize the logo and colors on the login page. Um, system emails come from your email address or from call tracking app email address or of your choosing. Um, you can add custom help content for your customers to access the system. That's one thing with white labeling is then all of our help documentation. It's obviously not white labeled, but we'll give you the um, ability to upload your own and create your own uh, help portal. You can add a customized email uh, footer in the system emails, um, and you can use our integration with Stripe to build clients at marked up rates for their uh, usage of CTM. And lead sellers can distribute call leads to um, a network of clients at custom prices and add unlimited numbers of sub accounts for your clients. So we have a lot of white labeling options for you. So up next we have um, agency billing. 
for our marketing accounts, we have two main types of billing options available. Our default billing is agency billing. In this case, the agency is billed and all sub accounts share one available balance. The agency uses their own credit card to fund the usage. Um, and this is good, this is a good choice for white labeled accounts. Agencies can also integrate with Stripe using um, this option to bill their clients directly. Our second billing option is where agencies manage the account uh, but have their clients load their own credit cards um, and CTM bills their clients directly. So this is not white labeled, but it's an option as long as you're okay with them knowing that you're using us and not an extension of your product. So with that, we have pricing markups. So if you go to our settings, we actually have a pricing markup um, module, which agencies, customers, uh, with that, they'll see marked up prices in CTM, which will be set by the agency. And the agency can bill their customers using Stripe integration um, or their own billing methods. So that is our agency billing options. So with that, we've covered most of the um, features that come with the marketing plan. Um, does anyone have any questions? Like I said, we'd probably be finishing a little bit earlier. One of the things that I can show you, let me switch into, here we go. Um, so if we go to our reporting, we now have um, we have our agency dashboard, which is going to be the reports that are going to show. Um, this is going to take all of our accounts and put them together, or I could scroll down and see all the individual accounts that we have. So this condenses them, and then that's going to be each one individually. Um, and then we also have the ability, of course, to create endless amounts of sub accounts so that you can easily switch um, in and throughout all the different um, accounts. Something else that's kind of cool, um, if we go to our tracking numbers, we can view all accounts. So what this will do, rather than looking at our tracking numbers in one individual account, uh, we could have it show for all of our sub accounts. So in this case, we'll see our tracking um, numbers and it'll actually tell us what account that they're in. So if I want to do some quick cleanup and I want to find all of my Google AdWords sources, yeah, probably have to spell it right. Nope, still didn't get it. <laughs> Third tries a charm. Now I can see all of my AdWords sources between all of my various accounts. And what's also cool about that is you can um, then switch between the different accounts. So it's pretty common to um, purchase a number in the wrong account. And then you could very easily switch it between one and the other. So if I wanted to change the account owner for this number, because maybe I accidentally purchased it in the wrong account, I could very seamlessly move it into one of my other accounts. So that's a pretty cool feature on the uh, marketing plan. Let's see, oh, the same um, how we can see all of the tracking numbers. I could also have an agency call log that now it's gonna show me all of my calls um, in my agency, and then over here it's going to tell me what actual agency that was. So that's another uh, built-in feature here. Um, yep, I'm not seeing any questions coming in, so this is the price markups. So so here we can see um, one that we've had. So this is where we can actually mark up prices by percentage. So this would be what your clients would actually see if they were to log in. So if we wanted to mark them up by 50%, it's going to show us our costs, um, what me as the um, agency would actually be, be billed and what the client would actually be billed. And uh, since we charge for multiple things, one is phone call, 
others' phone number, there's texting, transcriptions, um, spam detective, enhanced caller ID. You can decide, um, you know, how much you want to mark up for each of them. So in this case, for texting, we marked up by 200%. So, you know, we're charged a penny and they're charged three pennies. So um, same here, maybe I want to do 500% because I want to make some money. So then it will show me. No, I want to be 500. That, you know, I'm being charged three cents and that the customer is going to be charged 21 cents. Uh, so I had somebody um, write in a question about spam calls. Um, they said, I, how can I troubleshoot, or troubleshoot spam calls? It seems that even after marking calls as spam, we still get called. So marking them as spam isn't necessarily going to prevent them from coming in. What you can do is under our numbers um, call settings, we have our um, spam detective. If you enable this, um, and you could tell it to solve a CAPTCHA, um, which most spam calls won't be able to do, and then it will drop the call, so it'll prevent spam calls from being routed to your agents. So that's one technique. Um, if you're using things like IVR menus, um, spam and robo-dialers shouldn't be able to get through there. Um, because they can't do key presses, so that's usually a pretty easy one um, to help solve them. But um, we have a lot of various troubleshooting that we could do. Um, I should cover our help. So if you ever needed help with something like spam calls, we have, um, you can chat with our support, you can call in, uh, you can create a ticket. We have a great um, help center. So we could actually come over here and search for anything. So if I was looking for spam, um, we'll give you some ideas on preventing unwanted calls to your numbers. So we have a lot of resources to help you here. Um, go back. Uh, we also have our blog as a great resource. We have our training hub. So a lot of the videos uh, that we watch um, throughout the academy, those are all stored there. And then, of course, we have the Academy. Um, that's a great resource as well. Um, and we have our Quick Help, this little pop-up. We could search for anything here, and it will help us. So if I wanted to search for spam, so this would be um, guides actually showing us how to um, set things up. And then these are going to be help articles uh, that we have based on those items. So we have lots of resources for you to help prevent the spam calls. All right, well, it doesn't look like I'm getting any more questions coming in. So thank you all for attending today. I uh, hope we all learned something, got a little excited about cues and post-call surveys and triggers and custom fields. Um, there's just so many use cases for all of those. Um, there will be a short survey after this. Um, so if you have any feedback for us, please let us know on how we can improve these classes. Um, and then I hope to see you all tomorrow as we will be covering our contact center features. So have a great day, everyone.